Hello everyone and welcome to the MCC Welding Program Safety Review. My name is Hunt. And my name is David. And today we're going to cover all the MCC Welding Safety Guidelines. Hello everyone and welcome to the MCC Welding Program Safety Review. My name is David and I am going to cover the MCC Welding Shop Safety Guidelines, Safety Procedures, Proper Equipment Usage, and Mandatory Shop Cleanup Processes. If you have any questions about any of the information contained in this safety review, or if you are unclear or uncertain about any safety processes or procedures, stop what you are doing and ask your instructor for clarification. Remember. Safety is everyone's responsibility, and with that in mind, let's get started. But first, a few administrative announcements. We recommend that you park your vehicles in the designated parking areas that are located just to the north and west of the welding shop. Also, please note that food or drinks are not allowed in the welding lab areas. Drinks that are in spill-resistant containers are allowed in the classrooms. Each welding lab course has a student progress chart associated with it. This chart will list the welding processes, weld joints, and welding position for each assignment. This list also requires students to perform for their instructor the prescribed procedures to safely set up and then shut down the oxy-fuel welding and cutting equipment. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, includes eye protection, gloves, and being properly clothed to protect your body from severe burns and other injuries. Clear impact resistant safety glasses are mandatory and are to be worn in the welding lab at all times. Remember, no safety glasses, no lab. Proper attire is mandatory to safely work in the welding lab. Long sleeve cotton shirts and full length cotton pants are required. Cotton material such as denim, blue jean material is ideal. Cotton pants or shirts with frays or holes are not permitted. A leather welding jacket or a welding cape and bib are requirements and are required whenever you are welding out of the normal position. Leather shoes are also required. Sneakers, open toed shoes, polyester or nylon footwear are not allowed in the welding lab. Welding caps and earplugs are highly recommended. Before you go out and purchase welding protective wear or equipment, we urge students to visit our welding supply vendor. They offer substantial savings to MCC welding students on all welding products, including welding power supplies. We highly recommend students purchase quality welding gauntlet gloves. Many less expensive gloves don't have a liner inside and offer less protection from heat. Our welding supplier also stocks a starter kit from Tillman. MCC students can purchase it at substantial savings. The kit includes 11 welding essentials including stick and TIG welding gloves, work gloves, safety glasses, cutting goggles, wire brush, flint striker, chipping hammer, and soapstone with holder and welding tip cleaner. They also include a free Weld America t-shirt. We also have standard welding helmets in shop for those students who may only be taking a class as an elective and who do not intend to weld in their future. Most students prefer the electronic auto darkening helmets for the ease of locating their weld starts. In the oxyacetylene booths, each welding booth is equipped with oxygen and acetylene regulators, as well as a Victor Series 100 torch. This torch will take various welding tips and cutting and heating attachments. We will only use welding tips in the oxyacetylene booths. Welding tips have small rubber o-ring seals that require hand tight only. Do not use a wrench, it will crush the seals. When installing the welding tip, position its direction or clock the tip on the torch's body so that the torch is balanced in your hand when welding. Otherwise, your hand will fatigue very quickly when welding. Do not direct the flames towards the hoses or towards the booth walls. Proper personal safety and equipment safety practices are always paramount to everything we do here in the welding program. If you need to walk away from your welding booth for any reason, 
always stop your flame and secure the torch in the holder prior to leaving your welding booth. Cylinders on portable oxyacetylene cutting carts must always be properly secured to the cart. Oxygen cylinders are under high pressure and can have as much as 2200 PSI when full. These cylinders are equipped with a valve that has a closed seat and an open seat. These cylinders are designed to have the valve opened completely to the open pressure seat to keep the high pressure away from the valve stem packing seal. Failure to completely open the valve to the open valve seat can be cause for the oxygen leakage at the valve stem. Acetylene fuel cylinders, on the other hand, are rated as low as pressure cylinders to the range of 250 PSI. These valves do not have a full open pressure seat. It's very important to open the valve no more than one half of a turn when using any fuel cylinder. The purpose for this is that in the event of a fuel leak or uncontrolled fire, the operator can quickly shut off the fuel supply. Prior to placing a regulator on the cylinder, always crack the cylinder valve by opening it quickly and then immediately closing it to discharge any foreign material that may have accumulated in the orifice of the cylinder valve. Always stand away from the direction of the orifice of the valve when clearing a valve by quickly opening and closing it. Regulators are designed to not be interchangeable between cylinder types. Fuel regulators have left-hand threads and oxygen regulators have right-hand threads. Left-hand threads are indicated by notches in the coupling fasteners from the cylinder to the regulator and then from the regulator to the torch body. Both oxygen and acetylene regulators have two gauges, a cylinder pressure gauge that indicates cylinder pressure and a line pressure gauge that indicates the line pressure that it has been adjusted to. The line pressure gauge on your acetylene regulator has a range outline in red that is a critical zone which should never be used. When acetylene is discharged above 15 PSI, cavitation may occur inside the tank, causing heat in the cylinder to increase, resulting in a possible explosion. With a discharge pressure above 15 PSI, the absorbent material and acetone within the cylinder cannot keep up with the outlet pressure set by the valve. Normal acetylene operating pressure for oxygen acetylene cutting in the shop is 5 to 7 PSI. With the right cutting tip, these units can easily cut through steel that is several inches thick. When cutting, make sure you always cut away from the cylinder hoses and away from the combustible materials that could ignite and start a fire. Always use the appropriate eyewear protection for the job at hand. Shade 5 is the minimum required for oxyacetylene welding or cutting. As previously mentioned, protective gear includes eye protection, gloves, and being properly closed to protect your body from severe burns. When welding and cutting, there is not only a danger of burns from the heat of the torch, but also burns to the eyes and skin from the intense ultraviolet radiation that is emitted. When shutting down a cutting system, always securely close both cylinder valves hand tight. Back off the regulator adjusting knob or T-handle until you feel the knob or handle turning easier. Bleed the pressures off the hoses using the torch valves. Ensure the valves are closed when completed to ensure there are no leaks when it is used the next time. Track cutters are straight line oxyacetylene cutting machines that are used to create quality straight line cuts and bevels for practice weld coupons and certification test plates. The torch operation is the same as the hand cutting procedure. These machines are motorized forward and reverse and the travel speed is adjustable with a knob on each end. The travel can be disengaged with a lever to freewheel the machine as needed. The torch angle is also adjustable for the cut required. Your instructor will ensure all students can safely operate these machines for accurate quality cuts. All cylinders changed on the manifold system located outside of the building will be supervised by your instructor. This is a process that all students will be trained on to ensure the proper and safe handling procedures of the pressurized gas cylinders. Cylinders are never to be moved or transported without cylinder caps installed. All grinding of all weld plates, both practice and test plates, will be done outside in the designated grinding booths. Always direct your grinding sparks and debris spray outward from the grinding booth. Be careful when grinding near walls as the spray can bounce off the walls and back on you. 
Safety glasses with a face shield are required for all grinding operations. Earplugs are highly recommended not only for hearing protection, but also for keeping metal grinding debris out of your ears. In each arc welding lab booth, there is a table, adjustable welding clamp, the welding electrode holder, and a welding ground clamp. On the table is a holder to store welding electrodes. Check the condition of the electrode holder for loose connections or worn out insulators. Inform your instructor if repairs are needed. Electrodes must be consumed to the numbers on the electrode. Always use the adjustable welding clamp fixture. Tacking of weld joints is the only acceptable time to weld using the table. Other than tack welding, do not weld on the table or the walls of the booth. Always remove the electrode from the electrode holder when not in use to prevent accidental arcing. Place your electrode stubs on the table to prevent accidental slipping on the floor. If weld spatter sticks to the table, grinding the table will be required during class cleanup each day. Keeping the tables flat will be important to you for welding joint fit up. In your welding helmet, shade 10 is the minimum shade recommended for arc welding. Higher currents will require darker shade lenses for all electric welding processes. If you wear corrective lenses, you might consider wearing your spare glasses because weld spatter can stick and ruin your primary glasses. Magnifier lenses are available for welding helmets if needed. Welding hoods with cracks or those that have been trimmed for close restricted welding access are not acceptable in the shop. Weld spatter will distort the clarity of the lenses. Purchase a dozen replacement protective lenses for your helmet. You will need them to maintain clear visibility when welding. Wearing a leather welding jacket or a cape and a bib with sleeves is required when welding out of position. Folds or pockets in clothing will trap hot spatter and can result in severe burns to your body. As a reminder, fire extinguishers are located near all exits of the welding labs. Emergency eye wash stations are located in each lab near the hallway entrance doors. Fire safety blankets are located near lab exit doors. You will find the angle grinders located in the West Lab tool room. Please do not leave the grinders unattended outside in the grinding booths. For security purposes, return the grinders to the tool room when you are finished grinding. If you need to replace a worn grinding disc, see your instructor for a replacement disc. Caution: Only lightly tighten the new grinding disc with a wrench when replacing it. They can become difficult to replace when secured too tightly. Always operate with both hands and use a full face shield and ear protection when using the grinders. Be mindful of your grinding sparks to ensure everyone's personal safety as well as your own. If not used in a safe manner, grinders can easily inflict damage to you and injure others. Each TIG welding booth is equipped with a welding table, torch, an adjustable clamp fixture, and a welding certification fixture for test plates. Each student will be required to furnish their own tungsten. We recommend using 332nd and 116th 2% seriated tungsten for AC and DC welding aluminum, carbon steel, and stainless steel. All of our TIG torches are air-cooled and must be allowed to cool periodically to prevent overheating and prevent damage to the torch components. Please remember, the pedestal grinder in the TIG lab is used for the tungsten grinding only. Use no other metal on this grinder. Other metals will contaminate the wheel and make it unsuitable for certification welds. When welding, cover all exposed skin to protect yourself from arc rays. All arc rays will burn you much faster than sunlight. It's the same type of UV light rays that come from the sun, but in much greater intensity. Ensure that no arms or hands are touching the table when welding to prevent an electrical shock. You could become a better path for the electrical current going to the ground than the arc gap. Trust me when I tell you that you will know when you are a better ground than the arc gap. TIG welding gloves are very thin leather gloves for the purpose of feeling the filler wire to properly feed it to the weld pool. Other thin leather gloves may also be used as a substitute, such as batting gloves, golf gloves, and thin cotton gloves. All TIG welding machines and the backing gas fixtures for certifications are on an argon manifold system. Always check your shielding gas pressure at the welding machine each class period for the correct gas flow. Turn on the power supply, wait for startup, 
and depress the foot pedal remote to adjust to 15 to 20 cubic feet per hour, or CFH, on the flow meter. The flow meter in the welding booth is used only during welder qualification testing with the jig fixture. In the MIG welding booths, you will find a MIG torch, an adjustable welding clamp, a ground clamp, and a pair of welding pliers. Always secure the MIG torch and the pliers on the wall hook when not in use. All practice welds and weld testing is done in the adjustable weld clamp. Do not practice weld on the table. The tacking of weld joints is the only welding permitted directly on the table. Weld spatter on the table makes ideal joint fit up and tack welding difficult. As mentioned earlier, grinding of the tables will be required during cleanup when spatter is stuck to the table. Every student is responsible for performing cleanup in the lab and the classroom at the end of each class. Any area where you have used the lab equipment must be cleaned at the end of class. Any student not participating in shop cleanup may be withdrawn from the program by the instructor. Each weld lab has push brooms, dust pans, and hand brooms mounted on the wall. Please note that no metal debris of any sort is to be placed into the lab trash cans. All used up weld plates, slag, and spent electrodes are to be disposed of in the white roll-off dumpster located outside of the building. Track cutter slag drawers are emptied at the end of each class. Sweep all tables, weld booths, and weld booth tables into the aisle, then sweep the aisles and general floor area. Sweep off the outside grinding tables and booths. Put all tools in their proper places. Check that all welding machines are turned off. Turn off all oxyacetylene regulators. MIG and TIG flow meter valves at the welding machines do not require closing. However, all manifold systems and cylinders are required to be closed. Please advise your instructor if you discover any tools or equipment that needs attention or repair. Ask your instructor or any of our instructors to clarify shop policy or procedures if there is anything about this shop safety review that is unclear to you. Safety matters. Remember, each person is personally responsible for conducting safe operations in the welding shop. After watching the safety review, each student is required to sign the shop safety form attached to the back of your course syllabus. Your signature confirms that you have viewed this shop safety review video and that you understand the MCC policies, procedures, and safety information contained within it and in your course syllabus. Thank you for watching and we hope that all of your experiences in this program will be safe, informative, and an enjoyable learning experience. We look forward to seeing you in the Welding Lab.